Okay, so the A580. The card that was announced over a year ago, and really should have come out at least 1.5 years ago, according to Intel themselves, that card finally launched this week. And yeah, I do apologize for not having really any coverage ready for this thing leading up to its launch or on its launch, but the fact is I was on vacation when it came out and I didn't see this release as being an event worth pulling me away from my trip. And honestly, I'm not the only one it seems. While well, Tech Power Up had a review at launch and Hardware Unbox kinda did, most reviewers didn't seem to be paying much attention to this one when it actually came out, and heck, even Hardware Unboxed dressed up its review video as more of a comparison or versus piece of content, not strictly a review. And while that seemed odd to me at first, I'll tell you why I think someone would do that. I think you do something like that if you think the main subject of the video, which is the A580, isn't going to interest anybody, not enough to put in the effort to do it. And so you put a bunch of other GPU names in the YouTube title for searchability, and then you hope that gets the video to do at least okay. And you know, I'm confident in this opinion because the written version of the review didn't come out until days after the launch, which you never see in a big release out of Hardware Unboxed. So I'm confident that there just wasn't a lot of priority in this one. And I'm also confident that Steve made the right call. You see, I've been tracking the interest in the A580 while I've been on vacation, and it does seem like the reviews out there for it aren't getting as much love as other reviews. You see, Hardware Unbox usually gets about 300,000 views for a review video, always over 200,000 and sometimes over 400,000. Yet the A580 in the first day and a half, that only got around 100,000 views. And then by day five, it's not grown that much. I'm confident this is going to underperform other review videos. And that's a shame because I do believe that this product is much better than the other Alchemist ones. And I'm confident that if the A580 launched a year ago when it should have come out with performance like this, beating the RX 6600, despite being priced lower than it, I think there would have been a lot of positive buzz around ARC. But it isn't launching a year ago. The A580 is launching now, and with new drivers, though, that I've tested that are actually kind of interesting. But I'm just worried, based on what I'm seeing, that even if Intel does launch a decent product now, that they've already done irreparable damage to their brand, and that it's just done. That most gamers, and honestly even companies that might sell ARC products, have already written it off, and there's not much Intel can do anymore. Indeed, when I look at Newegg and Amazon, I see no evidence people are buying these things despite some positive buzz in some reviews. And retail sources I talk to, if I put this on screen, they tell me that they basically don't want to stock the card. Most of them say they either uh, aren't sure if they will have them or if they will get them, they're not sure if they'll get more than one model and it will be like weeks after the official A580 launch. And contacts of mine at major retailers that have A580s tell me that there have been effectively no sales and no interest shown from the public. And it's actually funny, this source here was mad I was even asking about it and didn't even seem to realize the card was already out. So actually, maybe I'm therefore an idiot for rushing out this video in the middle of the night, the day after I got back from vacation around a subject nobody seems to care about. But I'm doing it because even if this video bombs in views, I have tested the A770 that I bought myself and have kept around this whole time to test every now and then periodically to see if it's getting better in case someday something changes. And I'm putting this video out even though it's around a subject people don't care about because I'm telling you, something has changed with Intel's recent drivers. Seriously, I do feel like this video just had to be done even if it was put out in an awkward time because it marks a milestone in... ARC's development and whether ARC becomes a real thing or if it remains dead forever, well, this day will be a day to remember in its history. And so that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to be trying to answer a few questions. Number one, is the A580 at $180 a good buy despite the internet mostly ignoring it? Is it a hidden gem? And number two, I'm going to answer the question, do ARC's drivers work well enough now for me me to recommend it to most gamers all of a sudden. And then number three, 
Do I think it's time to get hyped about other upcoming ARC products based on recent changes? I want to get to answering all of those important questions, but first an ad from a sponsor. My girlfriend likes dressing up our pets, and heck, I do too sometimes. Probably a lot more than they like it themselves. But you know what's scarier than being dressed up by a giant human like a strawberry or a tomato? Well, that's overpaying for Microsoft software. And that is why you should go to cdkeyoffer.com during their Halloween sales event. Whether it's Microsoft operating systems, office products, or many of the latest games, cdkeyoffer.com provides PC gamers with a product that I honestly think this community needs. And that's just avoiding monopolistic prices on software, especially Windows and Office products. And you know, the Moore's Law is Dead team has been working with this company for a very long time and still does for a reason. They've been good to us. They've been good to the community. Community. Heck, recently I got my girlfriend a new compact gaming PC as an early Christmas present, and when it came time to set up the Office software, I realized she was paying a lot of money for a year for Microsoft 365, and she was blown away to realize that that was a predatory service, and you can get Microsoft Professional 2021 Office for like $50 and then you're done. And you know what? You can get that around $50 cost if you just use the offer code Broken Silicon for 25% off. And you can use the code Die Shrink as well to get 3% off every other piece of software on the website, whether it's Steam, EA, or Ubisoft Keys. Using either of these codes, Broken Silicon or Die Shrink, helps support Wars Laws Dead a ton and it saves you money. So support this channel by supporting CDKeyOffer.com during their Halloween sale event today. All right, so the first thing I did when I got home from vacation actually wasn't to unpack. It was to hook up my A770 into my Raptor Lake benchmarking station and get to testing the newest drivers out of Intel. And look, Battlefield 2042, a game that just a month ago usually failed to boot on art graphics cards or at best would perform like integrated graphics from AMD, actually ran fine in 1440p and kind of well enough to be playable in 4k as well uh, seriously just a month ago i struggled to get an a770 running at decent frame rates in 1080p in that game and now it was almost doable at 4k 60 and i tested a handful of other games as well like deep rock galactic where i found it performed between a 3060 and 3060 ti and I also tested Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, a game that I often couldn't boot on ARC cards. Now it was running without crashes, and I could game at 4K60 with a few settings turned down. Mountain Blade Bannerlord impressed me even more, by the way. I got it to run kind of like an RTX 3070 in that one. And Hogwarts Legacy? I was getting close to at least ARC 6700 performance, so... Yeah, let me just cut right to it here with my next statement. Now, I didn't test every game I own, nor did I test any game for like eight hours straight. So it's not like this can be considered an all-encompassing stability test. But today, with the A770, I didn't get one crash and not a single game didn't boot up. And plenty of them actually performed how I would have expected them to. Alchemist seems to work now. But just because it works now... Does it work well enough for me to actually recommend it over the competition? And, well, that's where I get to the bad news about all of the games that I tested. You see, remember how I said that in Battlefield 2042, the A770 was doing above 60 hertz and 1440p with mostly ultra settings? Yeah, that's the same performance I got with a 3050 in my testing a year ago. And actually, a year ago, I also tested an RX 6700 10 gigabyte. That got around 70 frames per second in 4K with a mix of high and ultra settings, meaning that in 1440p, you're going to be gaming on an A770 like 6700 people are gaming in 4K, and that 6700 will be using about half the energy while gaming at a higher resolution. And if I get to the other games I tested, remember how I said that Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition could work in 4K if you turn down some settings. I can do the same with the 3050 in that game when I turn on high-quality DLSS. A770 doesn't have DLSS, so it's really not gaming better in that game than a 3050 does. And even if I bring up something like Mountain Blade Bannerlord, a game that I just told you the A770 was performing, as far as I could tell, like a 3070, 
Well, it actually had tons of graphical glitches in the overworld and in some menus, meaning that, yes, it was kind of like a 30, 70, 16 gigabyte in that game, but it was a 30, 70, 16 gigabyte with graphical glitches every now and then. And so, honestly, the best way I can put it is that the A770, the card that I tested today, it performs like an RTX 4060, but with more RAM, but also while chugging as much energy as a 4070 Ti. And so, yeah, you'll find some instances where Arc, like the A580, for example, punches above its weight in Spider-Man or Cyberpunk. But if you actually look at an overall average, still the A580 is really just an inefficient RX 6600 or RTX 3050. And even an A770 in my testing often performs kind of close to a 3050 in some games. And so I don't really know that that makes the A580, the card that was just launched by Intel, all that impressive. The argument for buying an A580 would be that you can save 10 to 20% on the price compared to AMD's RX 6600, as long as you're willing to put up with the occasional AAA game not working and also consuming far more energy. So well, if you're consuming far more energy throughout the year, you're really not saving any money though then, are you? And this is actually before we even start talking about the fact that there are open box RX 6600s for prices that are lower than a new A580. And that 3050s actually are almost the same price as the A580 is now while offering DLSS that almost makes up for the fact that it's a bit weaker. And the 3050 isn't even like an impressive card. So unfortunately, we're to a point where I have to say that I just feel like a lot of reviewers got it wrong a year ago. Not all of them, but some of them told you that this card, the, the generation that Alchemist was a generation in beta, but that it would improve over time. It has improved over time a lot. I just wish they would have said it's in beta now because it is. It's, it's still in beta. A year ago, it wasn't even in alpha. And because it's still in beta, I would say that I wouldn't pay more than $150 for the A580 due to its stability issues that are still there and due to its power consumption problems that are still there. And I wouldn't pay more than $250 for an A770 16 gigabyte for the exact same reasons. This is a giant difference from what I would have said about these products a year ago, but it's still not a perfect picture. But while the ARC picture isn't perfect today, it is much improved from a year ago. And so I do think it's worth me answering this next question here. If I won't recommend ARC products now, but I do think they've improved a lot from a year ago, where do they need to get to for me to eventually recommend them? And the fact is that I can't do it until Intel has built up some trust and it takes time to build trust. I can't recommend a product because of one good data point after dozens of bad ones for months straight. I want to see a new architecture come out and work at launch and then work for a year straight while their older products like the A770 only keep getting better. In other words, in a couple months, I want to see Meteor Lake with its Alchemist Plus architecture, which is a new one, so I think it counts, launch and be able to boot every game without tons of driver issues and then keep doing so for a year straight. Then I would consider recommending ARC products in general if they are price performance competitive with the competition. And only then would I also consider getting excited for Battle Mage. And actually on the note of Battle Mage, I guess I do want to say one last thing here before I close out the video. And that's that I reserve my right to change my view on a family of products from what I may have thought one or two years ago if the situation changes. In fact, I would argue that people who never change their opinion on a type of product or company, even when the situation changes, proves they never actually had an opinion that was based in facts anyways. Because if you never change your opinion, even when the facts change, that means that you never really had an opinion. You were just emotionally invested in one side of an argument. And... Well, if I think of something like DLSS, that was something I hated in 2019 and don't think I was wrong to hate in 2019. But then by mid 2021, I thought it was great. And I think it's honestly NVIDIA's greatest selling point for their products to this day. But that's because DLSS got better. That's because DLSS changed. And if I hear that the ARC team and the ARC 
family of products in the future are going to be better than what I heard a year ago, I reserve the right to change my opinion on that. But my opinion is not changing today. Today, it still feels like ARC is in beta. And today, based on what I'm told by my sources at Intel, AXG is still kind of a zombie part of the company. Although, you know what? I will say this. I have heard recently from multiple people that, well, look, Battle Mage isn't going to be some flagship enthusiast product like I've heard some fake leakers say in the past month. But I have heard that there is a chance the Battle Mage lineup turns into something that is similar in size to the Alchemist lineup. That is to say, not really going for the high end, but maybe no longer just the ultra low end. And that that might happen if Intel sees a successful launch of Meteor Lake's graphics. That if Meteor Lake's graphic launch goes well, then maybe the Battle Mage be at least as big as alchemist was and then that's their second chance and if that goes well maybe in two or three years intel will consider making celestial or druid be a full reboot of the arc product line but that decision hasn't been made now and i'll let you guys know if that happens but for now it still feels like the intel graphics division is pretty much dead in the water and not something worth paying attention to if you're an enthusiast gamer but I don't know. Today, there was some surprisingly good news about the progress in ARC driver development, and I think that's worth celebrating. It's not worth throwing a victory parade, like some people might think you should, but it is a milestone, and it's a milestone that I think we should watch. Maybe someday ARC will be an effective competitor to NVIDIA and AMD, and I certainly hope it will be, but still today, that is not happening this day. And that's just going about do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you share it. Tell your friends about it. Write Moore's Law is Dead on top of every billboard you come across. But then also make sure you're subscribed to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button. You're not going to want to miss all the upcoming content just in this week alone. There's going to be Raptor Lake refresh coverage, a live stream, an interview with a lawyer to discuss the fallout of the Microsoft Activision deal and NVIDIA getting raided in France and tons of other legal subjects that relate to gaming hardware and in fact if you support Moore's Law Z on Patreon for just two dollars a month you can ask the next guest Hogue a question and you'll also get access to the upcoming die shrink and previous die shrinks they're just bonus like hour long or over an hour long sometimes two hour long pieces of content without ads for the fans of this channel rewarding them for supporting us because well look we really do need your support on patreon it is a steady set of income that pays me and multiple other people that allows us all to put bread on the table to make sure this content keeps coming out at all hours of the day it seems you know we really can't do this without our patrons but no matter what if you made it this far i do have to say thank you for watching <laughs>